sub YouTube. Is this our habitat or where we feed habits at? Temptation. When it comes to external temptation, I like to put it right there in front of me and fixate on it for a moment and realize that it's outside of me and that everything that's here will always be here and that I'm fine. I'm alive and well while it's outside of me. So I don't need it. And there's no urge or rush because it will always be there and I will always be here. So the experience will always be here. Whether I experience it or experience it, it's always here to tap into. So with that said, let's move on to uh, temptation personified or embodied. You might have, again, everything is a projection of your own emotion and your own self. You might have a person that you lust after or these different things, the person that you admire, but those are just traits that you admire in yourself that you feel that you may lack, or you have this lust energy that's personified in this person, maybe a video vixen or whom, whomever, whatever the case may be, Brad Pitt for the ladies, whoever this person is that they're lusting after, it's just an energy inside of them that they have personified in this image, or in, you know, they, they, they say this is that lust embodied, that's what that is, and Again, with the temptations involved with food and all these different things, because so much food has to do with sexual energy in general. The whole, the whole feeling of chewing and having it, an oral fixation, and some people even wanting, they don't feel right when they're not constipated. They don't feel right without that weight on them. So it does have a sexual connotation at some level, regardless. And, you know, I know it's rough to even think of that, but it's the truth. So, again, with these things, you know, that we put in us, visualizing it, um, the temptation, I mean, it's put in you, all of these things, you're putting them in you. So all this temptation going inside you creates that clutter. And it's just like, if you're at a certain vibration, I bet you when you go work out at the gym, it won't be too many people there because you're at a certain vibration to where it's not so much clutter inside you, so it's not that much around you. Might be a few souls, might be a few beings around you to represent this feeling of not being alone or not being one. You know, just a reminder of that. But in reality, you're really... You're really one or alone by yourself. We're all just images of e reflections of each other. So you can tell from the clutter around you what's going on inside you. All the energies that you give into. The temptations that you give into. And all these voices. All the, you know, the forces that you put in you and around you are one and the same. So temptation embodied and personified. We, we see it every day. You know, you have that person that, that you don't want to really be around because they they drink or they smoke. And you know when you're around them that you, you're more likely to drink or smoke. It's really what's in you. That he even has you on that same vibration with that person. To where the temptation exists. And the same thing vice versa. You know, they might be seeking you because they know that y'all you're both weak and both in a similar state to where they can influence you to drink or smoke, and then you can both indulge in that and supposedly not feel as bad because you're not doing it alone. Because when you're just by yourself doing it, yourself really refutes you. And if it doesn't, that's a person that's really gone, drunk by themselves and things like that. It's a person that's really from them, far from themselves. So. When we think about temptation personified, what we have to do again is get to a different state within ourselves, get to a state of balance and a state of peace where like, I, you know, I, since being in this state I've, I've, I'm in internally, I've been to terrible places, terrible environments, however you want to look at them, some of the worst slums. I've been in a strip club before. I don't mean I'm spending money or drinking or smoking in a strip club because I don't need to put things in me to have a good time. But the people that I've associated with in my life early on when they knew this person or persona that they think they know or knew, 
we still have a connection. So I've, I've gone out with them before since being cleansed and living whole. And I didn't have to indulge in that to have a good time or be around them. And and I'm not going to just throw them, you know, it just doesn't mean I'm throwing my um, my energy around just by bringing myself to that. Like like they say with all the prophets, they go, they hang around many people, they hang around the lepers and all the in different environments. That doesn't mean they indulge in the same things. As long as you have the peace inside you, it doesn't matter. And that's really, you know, what it is. You know, you, you want to not separate yourselves from these people. Maybe for a little bit at first, though, you need to get some distance to where you can find yourself, get the balance within, and you vibrate at a different level to where you can resist and find your will. Some people haven't even found their will. So, you know, it's just, it goes hand in hand with finding yourself or removing the clutter. And then the influences will cease. You know, you should be surprised how many friends I lost once I quit smoking. All of them. Pretty much all of them. Um, you know, when drinking is a little different cause like everybody drinks and everybody needs a designated driver. So, uh, you know, I need that designated driver at a year award. So, I mean, it, I'm in my own self, uh, even though, you know, you are still some, in some ways attacked by the scenes around you. You know, I could go into a Burger King with somebody, they eat the Burger King and it's not gonna. It's just gonna go right through me. I transmute it. I'm not eating that. I'm not indulging in that. They're eating that. You know. I know the smells and all those things will, are going through my sensory body, but that's it. They're just going through. I'm not at a state where there's any temptation there because I know myself inside myself. The peace is there, so I know I don't need it. And that's that's so that's so long ago. So when it comes to a bar or strip club or any of these things, if I were to go to these places, yeah, you're being attacked, but you can transmute it in, in, with the peace inside yourself. You don't have to indulge. And then at some level, you realize, like, why are you there? You know, there's really no point to be there other than just to, to, to please that limbic part of the brain, that social aspect of this human body. You know, that part of the illusion of being human. You know, sometimes it's, if that's all people are doing, you know, it's like, ah, I'll do it once a year, you know, kick it with y'all. But I'm still doing it from my perspective. I don't have to stoop. And that's not to say they're less than me. That's just to say the vibration that they're tuning into is a different one that I don't, I don't want to be on. I'm not saying that they can't change their vibration like anybody. So temptation is personified but it's really a projection of energies that are within us.